So are you guys real Swartwood MCAT students? Hell yeah! Hi guys, let's look at this integral uh, that was given to us. It's actually a very famous integral, so I'm sure you can find versions of it on YouTube. You can probably find it in many books, etc., etc. Uh, I do want to talk briefly about this guy and talk about some properties that we can use here. Okay. So uh, the question is, how do you evaluate an integral like this? Well, one, it's a definite integral, which actually makes it easier. Let's look at this. Uh, first, this looks pretty nasty, but it is basically symmetric about zero, right? Because you're negative one and positive one. So when you see things like that, a general principle that I think is probably more important than any tricks for this specific integral is this whole even and odd thing. So you remember for an odd function, that just means that if you were to go out some amount to the right, if you go out to the left the same amount, you're gonna get the same answer, but one will be the negative of the other. Okay, so basically if you wrote down symbols, if you took f of, let's say, negative x, which would be going over to the left, the value you would get here would be magnitude-wise the same value that you get over here, save for the fact that this would be the opposite sign. So that would mean it's negative of f of x. Okay? All right, so that's odd. What's it mean to be even? Even is even prettier. It just means that if you do a certain amount up here, you're going to do the same amount up here. So if you go to the right, you get a certain height. If you go to the left, you should get the same height. That means in terms of symbols, f of x is equal to f of negative x. Whether you go to the right or the left, you're going to get the same height value. Okay, okay, uh, no big deal. So then, how is that going to help us? Well, number one, you want to take advantage of the fact that you can, given any function, you can write it as a sum of even odd functions. Okay? The problem is f of x and f of negative x, for any generic function, definitely don't have to agree. So what we want to do is we want to come up with some function where we're going to force them to agree. Okay? So, the issue is this value and this value might not agree. So what we do is we combine them so that when we compute this value, we factor in both the original value and the negative of that value. Okay? And so what ends up happening is if we substitute here with negative x, because we've incorporated both values, you're definitely going to get the same answer. Because you're going to get f of negative x plus f of x over 2. And these are definitely the same. So that's an even function. Why the over 2? The over 2 is because when we add these two suckers together, you want to get back your original function. Okay? So now, let's try this. Let's do the odd version. All right, so what's the odd version going to be? The odd version is going to be if we put in these guys. So you want to, again, put in both function values, f, uh, f of x and f of negative x. But you don't want them to agree. If we just add them together, it'll be symmetric. When we substitute negative x and x, you're going to get the same value, right? But if you put that minus in there, a minus b is not the same as b minus a. But you definitely know that a minus b is equal to negative of b minus a, right? So what ends up happening here is when we substitute, we have a minus b. When we plug in negative x, we're going to have f of negative x minus f of x, which is b minus a. So one will be the negative of the other, okay? All right, so all I need to believe here is that you can take any function and write them as an even and odd guy put together. So how does that help us? That helps us because if you look at this sucker, we can write him as an even component and an odd component. But since we're integrating and we're symmetric about zero, right? Then an odd function integrated about a symmetric interval around zero is really going to sum to zero. Because whatever you do on the right and whatever you do on the left, they're going to cancel out. So this really goes to zero. Okay? So now we're just going to get that even component. So this guy is definitely cosine of x e to the 1 over x plus 1 plus cosine of negative x e to the negative 1 over x, or 1 over negative x, same thing, plus 1, uh, divided by 2. I'm going to factor that 2 out over here. That was following our pattern. f of x plus f of negative x divided by 2. Okay? All right, so um, the nice thing again, though, and that's kind of a special requirement here, is that cosine is also even. So cosine of x and cosine of negative x are the same. We're going to factor that sucker out. So we're going to get, again, 1 half integral of cosine of x from negative 1 to 1. And what's left over? 1 over e to the 1 over x plus 1 plus 1 over e to the negative 1 over x plus 1. Okay. All right, uh, the rest is just algebra. So we're going to crank this with algebra and we're going to combine these guys here. If we do that, I'm certain you're going to be comfortable with that, so let's just do it kind of quickly. Um, it's going to be 1 half the integral of negative 1 to 1 cosine of x. Up top, we're going to multiply over here, so get e to negative 1 over x plus 1, and multiply over here, and get e to the 1 over x plus 1. 
On bottom, we're going to get this guy times that guy for the denominator. We're going to FOIL that out. So this times this. e to the 1 over x times e to the negative 1 over x is just 1. e to the 1 over x times 1 is e to the 1 over x. 1 times e to the negative 1 over x is e to the negative 1 over x. 1 times 1 is definitely 1. Uh, you see here this really nice, pretty setup, because up top and bottom are exactly the same. So this cancels to 1. So this whole sucker reduces to the integral of cosine of x, which you know is sine of x. So it's 1 half sine of x evaluated, oops, evaluated from negative 1 to 1. Okay? And in this case, that's going to be a 1 half Okay, uh, I don't think anyone cares, but since sine is actually an odd function, and the whole theme of this is even in odd functions, you're going to get sine of 1 minus negative sine of 1, so that's going to be 2. 2 times a half goes to 1, so it's just going to be sine of 1. Okay. All right, not too bad, right?